America is moving fast towards a stagflation economic crisis, where costs go up and the available money goes down. Yet according to Steve Moore, a former member of President Trump's economic task force, this crisis is still avoidable. We speak to him about the current policies of the Biden administration and why America is facing a looming crisis. Hey, Stephen Moore, thanks for being on Crossroads. Thank you. Now, everybody's talking about inflation, stagflation, and they're blaming it on Russia, they're blaming it on Trump. I mean, what's really going on here? Let's start off by just kind of the you know, economic situation. What is stagflation? Well, stagflation is something we haven't seen in 40 years in this country, so I'm not surprised a lot of people don't know what it is, but anybody who's old enough to remember the late 1960s and the 1970s uh, does remember how painful that period was for the U.S. economy. And so stagflation is the combination of very high inflation, which we have certainly have right now with 8.5% inflation, and then also uh, an economy that's slowing down and even retreating. And we have some signs of that. Now, we're not in a recession right now as we speak. We did get one negative quarter of growth. It would take two quarters uh, to officially be in a recession, but we're skating near a recession right now. And this is a frightening and precarious time for the U.S. economy and for American families. They're facing these higher prices, obviously, at the grocery store and at the gas pump and everything else, all the ut utility bills and the, to rent a car or buy a car or to buy just about anything is a lot more expensive. And then you've got the economy slowing down, and that is stagflation, and boy, it can be really painful. I remember in 1981, 82, we had this terrible recession that was really one of the worst since the Great Depression. We don't wanna have a crash landing here, but we have to get this inflation out of the system. And I believe that the, that, that the match that lit this forest fire of high inflation was the mass of multi-trillions of dollars of spending in Washington. So it really starts with getting spending under control. Let, let's talk about that because, you know, depending on who you're talking to, they're blaming it on something else. I know Biden's been blaming it on Russia and also some have been blaming it on Trump. I mean, who's to blame for this? What's the real cause? You said it's this trillion dollars of spending. Well, there are a lot of factors, no question about it. And inflation is a really simple thing. It's too many dollars in the economy, right, chasing too few goods that are being produced. And so we have these parallel problems where we're not producing enough goods and services uh, for one reason or another, and also because we're putting so much money into the economy that that is just a natural force for higher inflation. Now, certainly the, the invasion of Ukraine by Putin certainly is contributed to this high inflation, no doubt about that. Um, and there are other factors. A lot of the spending actually happened um, in, the, in the final months of, of uh, Trump administration because of the COVID crisis. But then Biden came in and spent $3 trillion more that we didn't have. This was an avalanche of new spending for all of the social programs and welfare programs, uh, bailing out blue states. And, and that has led to all this money in the economy that people are spending. I mean, it's really interesting because I saw Joe Biden saying the other day, well, yeah, the economy really didn't perform that well, but consumers are spending a lot of money. Well, yeah, they're spending a lot of money because everything's more expensive. <laughs> I didn't really get the logic of his point. If you have to pay twice as much for gasoline, guess what? You have to spend more money. Uh, but I, I really do think it's the runaway spending is the major culprit. And that's why I, you know, I've been telling Congress, you've got to get start cutting government spend, not raising spending. And incidentally, can you imagine how bad the inflation problem would be today, and it is awfully bad already, if we had passed that $5 trillion Build Back Better bill. I mean, you'd be not talking about 8.5% inflation, but probably be twice as high as that. So uh, those are the factors at play here. Obviously, I think that um, that Biden's war on American energy has also contributed to this. Look, we didn't have to worry about Russia or Saudi Arabia or Iran and these other countries under Trump because we we're producing so much oil and gas here that we were actually a net exporter. That when Trump left office, we were actually exporting oil and gas, not importing it. Now it's just so frustrating, almost inhumane, that we actually have to import our oil from Moscow. We can't get it from Texas and Oklahoma because they won't allow the drilling, but we have to get it from these other countries that then use that money to, uh, in this case, to fund Putin's war machine and kill Ukrainians. So it's it's been bad for our national security and bad for our economy. 
Yeah, and they're also talking about ending the tariffs on China as well. And China, of course, is one of the last remaining major traders of Russia. So it, it seems a bit kind of uh, hypocritical, I guess you could say, that while they're criticizing Russia and financing you know, Ukraine, they're also financing Russia and even talking about basically you know, ending these tariffs on tr Russia's yeah, main trading I mean, partner. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you an example of what you're talking about. So under Trump, we were at about 11, 12 million barrels a day of production in America of, of oil. Uh, Biden took it down by about a million barrels a day because he says he wants to destroy the oil and gas industry because his climate change crazies think that we have to eliminate fossil fuels. So that's been a ruinous policy and that needs to be turned around as well. Now let's talk about the Federal Federal Reserve and where this fits in because you know they of course you typically have boom bust cycles and you go into the history of the Federal Reserve yeah. you can watch yeah. how economic crashes happen in America. Yes. They crank up the interest rates, there's a bust, they lower the interest rates, there's a boom. They kept it at 0% under Obama. They raised it, I think, what, beyond 3.5% under Trump, maybe even higher. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in other words, they were eating up the economic gains Trump was bringing through the, yes. which is, it's, it's, it's a semi-private business. They were eating up all the money that Trump was making in terms of the economy. They'd lower it back down under Biden to, I think, what, 0%. But now they're finding they can't keep it there. And so they're cranking it up. I mean. And if you look at history, this is like major economic disaster just on that. Yeah. What's going to be the impact of them increasing interest rates now? Well, uh, I believe the Fed has been way behind the curve in terms of taming this inflation and, and you know, catching this tiger by the tail. And if you just listen to what the Fed and the White House has been saying about inflation over the last year. First, they said, oh, there's no inflation. And then they said, oh, yeah, there's inflation, but it's temporary. And then there was a brief period when, you know, the, uh, some of the media, liberal media and the CNN and some even people in the White House, well, a little inflation is good for you. Yeah, <laughs> tell people at the gasoline pump. And now they're finally acknowledging that we have a systemic problem with inflation. And when I hear people like Chuck Schumer, like you mentioned what he said last week, which was, you know, uh, it's because of the Trump tax cuts. I'm, well, no, actually, what, when, after the Trump tax cuts, inflation went down to one and a half percent. We actually increased the supply of goods and services. So, yes, the Fed has to raise rates and it has to stop buying assets. It's, it's adding to its balance sheet by buying up assets in the economy, mortgage backed securities and so on. And what does that, when it buys these assets, then, then it pumps money into the economy and we have too much money in the economy right now. That's why we have inflation. And, but there's also, you know, you have to do something about increasing the supply side of the economy. That's what we call people like me, supply side economists. You've got to incentivize businesses to produce more. And you got to incentivize get people back to work. We have, you know, it's frustrating because we have the job market is really strong right now. I mean, let's let me be clear about that. It's a good, one of the best jobs markets I've seen in my lifetime. Uh, you want a job? They're out there. You know, we have 10 million job openings right now. So why aren't people filling them? And I think it's partly because we've been paying people so much money not to work. And We've got to get back to the idea of, you know, welfare being a temporary program. You know, if you lose your job, I've lost jobs, you know, you've lost jobs, you know, you have that that uh, safety net, but it's not meant to be, you know, we've had people who haven't worked a day for two years now, and that can't persist. We need people out there working. And so we got to change the incentives to get people working, suck in some of the money. We know how to do this, by the way. It's not that complicated. It's just a question of whether the Biden administration will do it.